All right, we got this subspace W spanned by these two vectors V1 and V2. And the question says, part A, find the closest point in the subspace W to this random vector that they're calling X. And then once we find that point, we want to find the distance from that point to the tip of the vector X. So maybe this is hard to visualize, so let's start by drawing a picture. So we have this subspace W, which is the span of these two vectors. And a quick check, I mean, you can look and see, does V1 and V2, are they scalar multiples of each other? And the answer is no. So that means these two vectors are linearly independent. And so the span of two linearly independent vectors, you guys know this, is a plane. So we'll start off, so therefore W, subspace W is a plane. So we'll start off with a quick sketch of a plane, like this. So this is our subspace W, okay? And let's put right in the middle of the origin of our, of our world right here. And then it's saying we want to find the closest point in this subspace W to this vector X. So that's implying that X is not in the subspace W. If you wanted to, you guys have the toolkit, you guys have the knowledge to check and see is this vector X in the span of V1 and V2, right? You can set up an augmented matrix, row reduce, see if it's consistent or not. But just trust me, the vector X is not in the span of V1 and V2, meaning the vector X is not in this subspace W. So the vector X is sticking out of this plane somewhere like this. So here's our vector X. And we want to find the closest point in this plane W to the vector X. And so wouldn't that just be the orthogonal projection of the vector X onto the subspace W? Yes, it would. So if we project the vector X straight down, right there, say that's where it lands then this vector, which is in W, which is the projection of X onto W, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the closest point in W to the vector X. And so they're calling this point lowercase w. So don't get confused point versus vector. They're very similar. It's just one has an arrow pointing to the point. That's a vector. And then just the point is just the point. So they're both like ordered triplets, right? So we're calling this, we can call it a vector. Let's just call it a vector. This vector in W, closest vector in W to the, to the vector X, we're going to call it lowercase w. Very confusing. It's the notation that they used in the problem, so we'll just go with it. So we want to find this vector w. How do we do that? Well, you want to find the, it, all it amounts is find the projection of x onto w, and you guys have that handy dandy formula, a transpose a times some vector v equals a transpose times the vector that you're projecting onto the subspace. And you might be thinking, oh my god, where, there's so many variables and matrices and stuff. What is this vector A? You're bringing in this brand new thing. Well, don't panic. A is just a matrix whose columns are the basis vectors for W. So we were given these basis vectors for W, V1, and V2. right? We know they're a basis because they span W and they're linearly independent. So I could represent these in, in the diagram somewhere. I could say that this is V1. And I could say like this is V2, right? They're just two vectors that are not collinear that are in the subspace W, so they span W. Okay, moving right along. So the, our matrix A is defined in this formula to be a matrix whose columns are the basis vectors for W. So this is just V1, V2, which is negative 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. And so like I said, we're going to use this formula here to find our vector w. And so where's that vector hiding? Is it this vector v? Uh, like, can we just solve for v and then that's our vector w? No, we actually can't because the vector w is hiding in here. The vector w is this a times v. And so if we just want to find a times v and that's our answer, then you might be tempted to say, well, a times v is just equal to, can we just like, left multiply by a transpose inverse and say that this vector is a transpose inverse times a transpose times x. Can we just do that? Isn't that the shortest way to get a times v? Well, maybe, but in this case, like how do you know that a transpose is invertible, right? In this case, it's definitely not because a is a three by two matrix. So a transpose would be a two by three matrix and you can't take the inverse of a two by three matrix. So this isn't going to work. So how are we going to find a times v? Well, we got to find the matrix a transpose a, and we got to find the vector a transpose x, and then we'll have a system, we'll have a matrix equation, we can solve for the vector v, and then after we have v, we can do a times that vector v, and that'll give us w. So that's the game plan. 
So first we just got to find a transpose a that's some matrix and we got to find a transpose X. That's just some vector. So I'll be right back with those values. So I went ahead and did all the calculations for you. So a transpose a ends up being this matrix here and a transpose X ends up being this vector here. And remember X is this vector that we're projecting onto our subspace W. So now that we have a transpose a and we have a transpose X, we can write, rewrite this matrix equation. We can say, a transpose A times the vector V equals A transpose X. So we have this new matrix equation, which is always going to be consistent. And we can write this in a, as an augmented matrix, row reduce it, and get our vector V. So after getting this augmented matrix all the way down in reduced row echelon form, we can tell that our vector V is 5, negative 1. And this is not our answer, though. Remember, we, our answer is A times V. The vector V is just a vector of the weight of the linear combination of these basis vectors for w that get us to the vector w. And so, so in order to get the, the vector w, right, in order to get x projected onto w, we have to multiply a times v. So let's do that. So here we go. After multiplying a times v, we get this vector negative 6, 8, 2. This is the vector x projected onto the subspace w, which by definition is the closest vector in w to the vector x. So here's our answer to part to part a. So now for part b, we want to find the distance from this point w, or from the tip of this vector w, to the tip of the vector x, which is the length of this dotted line here. And so in order to get that distance, remember this, this answer is going to be a scalar. It's not going to be a vector because it wants the distance. So in order to do that, we can first find that what this vector is, and then we can take the magnitude of that vector, and that'll give us the length. So first, how do we find this vector here? Well, isn't that just the vector x minus the vector w? Right, if we take this vector x, and we subtract out the vector w, we'll get this, this vector here, which would, which would technically be in w perp, right? So this vector here, let's go down and we'll say perp b. That vector, the answer is going to be the magnitude of this vector here, but this vector here is the vector x minus the vector w. So the answer is going to be the magnitude of the vector x minus the vector w. And this is magnitude of, right, these two bars just mean magnitude. It's not the number 11. It means the magnitude of the vector x. So x is, where was x? Where do we do x? We can just look up here. x is the vector 0, 14, negative 4. 0, 14, negative 4, minus the vector w. And we just found the vector w. It's right here. Negative 6, 8, 2. So now we can simplify this expression. We can just subtract this vector, this vector from this vector. And we just subtract element by element. So we get 0 minus negative 6 is positive 6. 14 minus 8 is 6. And then negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So now we just have to take the magnitude of this vector. And if you remember to do that, you just take the square root of the square of all the entries, <clears throat> of the sum of the square of all the entries. So this is square root of 6 squared plus 6 squared plus negative 6 squared. This expression here is the magnitude of this vector. And so that simplifies to 6 root 3. And boom, that's our answer. 6 root 3 is the length of this vector. So 6 root 3 is the distance from this point to this point. And that's what it's asking for in part B. So 